you can inject the political absurdity of today into a gospel sermon. I do it all the time. I do it all the time and they come to Christ. Because what is it, this, it's very simple to understand. Something happened. Someone told me to stay in my lane. You shouldn't be preaching that, stay in your lane. Oh no, you're not watching who just jumped into my lane. I didn't become political, the politicians became evil. And hello, I've been preaching against evil all along. When I preached against crystal meth and heroin, fentanyl, no one accused me of being a pharmacist. I'll let you think about that. This part is very uh, difficult for me. You mean the other part was easy? No, this part is very difficult for me. Two thousand twenty, Gavin Newsom closed every tent crusade we had in California. We were in the Silver Dollar Fairgrounds in Chico, and they told us you can't come. We were in uh, the fairgrounds in Sacramento, and he said you can't come. The Fresno County Fairgrounds said no. Bakersfield, no. As you know, what we've been doing up and down Highway 99 is pretty amazing. But five of them shut down. And there I was in my heart, so devastated. And I gave into it. Gave into it. One day I became absorbed in Matthew chapter 7. Specifically, the parts of Matthew 7 where Christ is talking about asking and receiving. Ask, seek, knock. What I didn't know is that at the base of the Mount of Olives where he was teaching this was a leper. You're gonna find out about him in the eighth chapter at the top of the chapter. He's listening. And you'll know that whenever a preacher is anointed, if they are, they're sowing seed in the audience. The seed for a healing will hit someone over here. The seed of conviction will win a soul over here. And it is an astonishing thing to watch the supernatural nature of how God works an audience. Through the spirit. And God was working in the leper. The law said he had to stay away from people. The Jewish law of social distancing said you can't get near a leper. That applied not only to the leper, but anyone who got near one. Jesus is coming off the mountain. And I'll, I'll, I'll parallel this. I want this to get in your heart. He looked at Christ and said, if you want to, you can heal me. How he got his attention, whether he touched him or not, all I know is, is he was within the six feet. with no mask. <laughs> now watch me because if you miss this, you're not gonna get what I'm really hoping to say today. That leper said, I am not an accident. I'm not a cruel joke. I'm a child of God. You said ask and you said if you being evil know how to give your children good gifts, how much more his personality changed. And that leper felt worthy to ask. You know, the laws notwithstanding, the rules notwithstanding, social mores notwithstanding, you could heal me if you wanted to. And Jesus broke the law, put his hand on him, leprosy and all, 
and healed him on the spot. Somebody shout right there. Shout! What is up with God at three o'clock in the morning? You know, he woke me up at three o'clock in the morning. How many of you have been awakened by the Lord at three o'clock? I rest my case. And I saw a hideous face. It was a composite profile. It was a face that would evoke in you the most profound horror and compassion. The face was a homeless face, an addicted face, a forgotten face, the crown trophy of wokeness in society. The victim, the poster child. And he said, he looked at me and he said, you could come and help me if you wanted to. So that's when I would have done, uh, it would have been great to have talked with Richard Harris there because I knew that I wasn't breaking the law by wanting to have a tent crusade. I didn't know the legal ease about it, but I knew I wasn't wrong. I knew it was my right and I knew that Gavin Newsom was wrong and that the lockdown was illegal. I couldn't give you the, the, the chapter or verse in, in the code. I couldn't quote the constitution but I can tell you for a fact that I knew that I was experiencing the exact same thing as Matthew 8. Either I'm gonna go and win these souls and I'm gonna break the law if I have to, but I'm going after them. So, so here's what we did. We went to Fresno and my friend Frank Saldana who runs our 10 crusades, a great man. I said, Frank, find somebody that owns a park and is willing to break the law. He said, okay. He found it. So we asked these people that owned a beautiful large park that used to be owned by the city and they bought it privately, had several soccer fields, a baseball field, it was large, it was in the center of town, it was a great place. And uh, so Frank gave them the speech, expecting them to say, are you out of your mind? We'll lose our business. We'll be arrested. He said, look, we want to do a tent crusade, invite all the drug addicts to come get saved. And we would like to use your land and rent it from you. And they said, please do that, because we are so sick of this mess and we want to break the law right along. Not only did people get saved and the tent overflowed, we ended up, my wife and I, having coffee at Starbucks, which I don't do. That's almost up there with conferences. And, uh, and we talked to him, former chief of police. He said, look, these gangs are getting saved. Nobody's getting infected. We got hand sanitizer. We, whoever wants a mask, we give them one. And if they want to not get close to anybody, and he started to have tears in his eyes. And that began the surge that you're seeing today. Every reason that you hear about me now has to do with the fact that then Cheon from Harvest Rock challenged Gavin Newsom on the lockdown, and the Supreme Court said, you were wrong to lock down the church in California. Now, 